question why I would never want to live inside the United States of America. Don't get me wrong. I, I think there's a lot of advantages to living in the United States, especially if you're married. Uh, as a single man over, say, 50, uh, there's very little benefit to being inside the United States. Um, but there's, you know, there's all these possible, it's like a matrix, right? A Venn diagram. I think that's what Kamala likes. She likes Venn diagrams. But the, there's, there's a hierarchy of prioritization, okay? And uh, a lot of people never have an introspective moment where they ask themselves, is this the best life that I can live? They more or less, um, I, I truly feel that 85% of people just accept whatever happenstance life they happen to choose. <laughs> they get a job and they, they choose that life. They accidentally get married and they choose that woman until they accidentally get divorced and marry the next one. And then, or the option number two is they hate, the men hate women, the women hate men until I don't know what they're doing. I, I, there's nothing more traumatic than a divorce on people's lives. But why I would never live inside the United States is simple because um, suddenly, it's quite obvious because I've been here about four months, I don't know, five months, I'm not sure. Um, and I, I'm here because I'm trying to get my knees replaced and I'm, I've developed, I, I have some sort of heart problem. Okay, I don't know, but it really doesn't matter to me, but it's just a delay in the game of life. Okay, but... Um, my biggest problem is suddenly uh, the age of everybody I'm talking to is uh, very difficult because of the age bias of the United States to uh, actually converse and talk with people younger than, say, I don't know, 40 years old, okay? So because I'm 65 plus, I'm suddenly classified in this group of people that have no brains, okay? I don't know what to say with these people. I have no use for people that are tired or retired. They're, they're retired and they're tired. They're basically on, on the float end of life where all they talk about is something they did in high school. Um, it's amazing how many people have no life after high school. <laughs> I mean... We, we have to have a never-ending new story or we are blasé, cliché, end-of-the-life people. I, I remember talking to this guy in the Iquitos, Peru, and he said this is the end-of-the-road location to come to. I don't agree with him, but it was kind of an interesting way of looking at the world. There are end-of-the-road locations for uh, people that want to retire abroad. Um, it, you know, but at the end of the day... What is the number one priority in people's life? I hope it's social life, okay? Because uh, knowledge for talking to myself is of little value, but knowledge shared in conversations and good company is good. Don't get me wrong. The, the men's group that I go to, well, it's not really a men's group, but it turns out to be a men's group because no women attend. I'm thinking about taking my sister uh, at... Um, 327 and 120 near Angola at uh, Papa Ducks is by far one of the most intellectual groups I've ever attended in my 26 years of nonstop world travel. Um, very few of the groups, the reason is, is that these guys are hands-on, experience-driven entrepreneurs, men of the world that get things done, and they, they're not just a bunch of guys that go take a job and put in their time. They're actually the movers and the shakers, even though they're not, you know, ne necessarily rich or well, a few of them are very rich. A lot of the farmers are extremely rich, but um, they have a lot of uh, Vietnam veterans there. And the Vietnam veterans uh, are some of the most um, well-rounded people on the planet or they're some of the most losers on the planet. Um, there seems to be two, two breakdowns of people that go to... Uh, go to the military, the ones that came back, uh, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And those who uh, go into float and just sit on getting all the benefits of being a, a veteran. Uh, the ones that uh, took their emotional skills and became 
a better person are very valuable people, okay? Um, consequences are what teach people to be um, com have common sense. And uh, the bouncing off of consequences, being suffering for your actions, <laughs> nothing, nothing can make you suffer more than being in a war where somebody can shoot you if you do something wrong. Um, it's a kind of a really fast uh, sort of uh, genetic pooling of the people and separation of the uh, what what the people that often survive are by far the thing. It's kind of I, I often think that the genocide of the Israelis in um, World War II by the uh, Germans. Always remember, the Germans did this, right? The Germans committed a thing that killed about 55 million people. You think Africa is dangerous. It's Germans that are the dangerous ones. They're actually building a military base, so I think in Ukraine or somewhere right now. Not a good idea. Okay, anybody that thinks they have a superior intellect, uh, and generally, as a class of people, there's a problem. But, but you can see that uh, somehow in the concentration camps and all this stuff, the Israelis, they sort of killed off the weaker of the species, okay? The weak, weaker of the group, right? Although uh, there is no one set Jewish class of pe uh, Jewish race. Uh, the Jewish people is more of an ethnic group. I want to go to Israel right now, and I'm really waiting. I'm, uh, I've got $1,600. I really would do much better on my GoFundMe if I had about $2,400. Uh, that would give me the, light, the, the leeway so I could move around within country of Israel and not so spend all my time trying to look for cheap uh, accommodation. I'm going to spend about two months there. But the, the there are people that go through hardship. I mean, nothing better for creating a well-rounded person than trauma, okay? And I'm not going to say that divorce is one of those traumas that makes people a better person. I, I very seldom meet somebody that comes out of a divorce without a, a just total bitter, angry thing. I, and this is why I would never live in the United States, is I don't want to live with divorced people, and I don't want to live with the... Don't get me wrong, you have the same thing in other countries, especially if you went to Western Europe, but I'm not going to live in Western Europe either, okay? I'm not going to live in any of the 25 overdevelopment countries. I like to live where life is uh, woven out of consequences, okay? Not just uh, you showed up for a job and you get $20 an hour, and then you buy a truck that's super big, and you never really had any stress in your whole life, and you cry all the time because life is too difficult. That is the United States right now. It's a bunch of entitled individuals. Even the older people, for the most part, just were lucky enough to have put in their time at a certain situation. Of course, I'm, I'm hoping for a depression, not a recession. I'm hoping for a depression to get these guys back in the shape. You often hear about people that went through the depression as having a better acute knowledge of understanding and how to live. Hey, why do they say that? People that go to the depression actually suffered and learned how to make decisions better. Maybe in a way it was the greatest generation. The greatest generation, I think, is really the people that came back from World War II. It was a, you know, clearing of the, uh, sadly, World War II killed a lot of people, 55 million people by the Germans, okay? It was the result, the causation of the German culture thinking they are superior, <laughs> Okay, anybody that intellectually thinks that they're superior to any race that thinks they're superior, don't get me wrong, there are races that are smarter, but to think that you're superior is kind of an arrogance that is kind of uh, hard to understand. Um, everybody has value, okay, and everybody is a genius in something. But I'm never going to live in the United States mainly because of this age bias. This age bias has got out of control. Um, I don't know what to say. I've never been in a country where they are so prejudiced against uh, different age groups. I mean, the, I get talked to by uh, young people as if I don't have a brain. And I, by far, have proven myself just if I explain my situation. They're not even smart enough to evaluate. Okay, uh, Andy, you're not very smart. I, go into, I said, I go to 100 countries. I've written five books. They, they can't con 
conceptualize that that takes a certain level of expertise or knowledge or whatever, or fortitude or diligence or whatever you want to call it. They look at it as uh, only if you have the bigger the car, the bigger the brain, which is about the dumbest thing, way of evaluating the bigger the house, the bigger the brain. That's the worst possible way of evaluating the moral turpitude, the, the value of a person to the world. Okay. The bigger the truck, the bigger the, I don't know. The, I'm, I'm in the area where Harley Davidson's and with fat men on Harley Davidson with fat women on the back and big trucks with big fat people with a handicap sticker on them. I don't think you should be able to put a handicap sticker on a dual cab truck with thing. It's not easy to get into. I watched my mother get in and out of the car. She had to go up to the edge, sit down, and then pull her legs over because she she was afraid of falling. Handicapped is a just a... I don't know. It's just a game. Okay, but the whole United States is playing a game where they are not really stand-up people on the most part. 85, 15% are just the best of the world. Uh, but the why I would not live in the United States is pretty much the age bias. The second reason is um, it's just not economically, um, it's a bad deal for the money, okay? You really don't get what you want for the amount of money you spend. What I do enjoy about the United States is the cleanliness. Okay, don't get me wrong. It's very easy to be clean, have your clothes washed, eat any kind of food you want. But there's two economies here that I really, really, really keyed in right now. There's the people that spend, you know, like the $8 for all the products and the people that will go find it for $1. I don't know how many times I realize there's two. I almost buy... I consider stores right now a place to go look for products and kind of understand them and learn about the product. Then I buy it on Amazon, and I buy it for one-fifth the price. Amazon, Etsy, eBay are going, and I think there's a new one called Temu. Temu, I haven't used it, but, you know, whenever, I don't know, Banggood, the one from China, gets off the thing, I, they really need these Chinese uh, websites selling more products so that we uh, basically – take Amazon and kind of put them on. I used to buy a lot of products on Banggood. But the point is this. The more more online services, the lazier people are going to get, right? <laughs> Contrary to what you think, but I, I would always evaluate a woman that I wanted to date is what, what store she goes to. If they don't go to Dollar General, they don't go to Dollar Tree, they don't go to Audis, I, I consider them contempt before consideration. And I don't meet many people in the United States that don't believe that they're too good to do this. And that's the funny part of life. Too good to get a good value. That is really the dumbest of the dumb. Okay. Uh, but I am very happy here because I have a great family. I have um, three sisters that think they have the right to tell me anything they want to do. They're really amazing. I got to believe there's some long-term anger on the part of my sisters and my brothers. They all believe that uh, I should keep my mouth cut, shut and listen. But this is a product of um, social class. The minute that somebody has more money than somebody, they actually think they're smarter than them. It's kind of an interesting dilemma. I mean, this is the problem with the whole United States. Everybody in the whole United States thinks they're smart. Little do they know they don't have very much knowledge on the geopolitical situation of the world. <laughs> Okay, anybody that would vote for Kamala Harris has to be insane. Don't get me wrong. Donald Trump just keeps his mouth running too much. But he, if you really just take it, we had no wars during Donald Trump. The unemployment was like, I don't know, 3 or 4%. The inflation rate was low. And they, they cannot evaluate that. They buy only personality. It's a cult of personality instead of just common sense. You ought to vote for what makes uh, the country the best country. Make America great again. Okay. I'm not going to move. I, I'm going to, what What the goal right now is that I get, um, I've got a possible aneurysm. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what. I guess I have either two months before I leave. I don't know. I'm going to go to a doctor. Uh, I can't remember. Thoric doctor somebody probably is going to take two cat scans of my one cat scan of my chest one cat stand cat stance 
CAT scan of my pelvic area, and they're going to look for aneurysm. An aneurysm is a bulging uh, vein or artery or whatever. And um, they're going to look, because these things can burst and kill you, and, you know, like an 85% kill rate, maybe higher than a heart attack. I think I'd rather have a heart attack than an aneurysm burst. You can bleed out in minutes, right? But uh, after I talk to the doctor on September 26th, I will know whether it's just on hold and basically I'm just, they're just watching this, whatever that means. They're being that I can't, I've never seen the same doctor twice here. I don't know what to say on that. Um, then I'll either go to Israel, September, probably in October 10th, or I will get a surgery immediately and try to go October, November, something like that. I don't know how long I'll have to wait after an operation. Uh, I'm cutting weight. I've already lost like probably 14 pounds, 15 pounds from, I was kind of weighing in at 202 when I came here, which I was kind of depressed, I suppose. And I've been kind of depressed for like five or six years, but I, right now I'm on a diet. It's kind of amazing. Uh, no holes barred, no processed food, no, no grains, no, 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 uh, sugars, no carbohydrates, no, uh, Cooking oil. Cooking oil seems to be the most dangerous thing. I wanted to stop on the way back from an AA meeting today and uh, at famous recipe because I can have livers there. But they cook them in, you know, corn oil or something like that or something. And it's not healthy for you. And I'm not going to do this anymore. I've gotten hardcore on it. The interesting part, when you go no processed food, it's hard to buy food to eat. <laughs> I mean... I'm not sure I actually need this every other day old mad diet, one meal a day diet, because <laughs> it's hard to eat. Plus, a lot of the foods that are healthy for you, like nuts and fiber and stuff, flush through the system like mad. They're really good at uh, prebiotic. Uh, fiber is a prebiotic. That means it's before biotic. It's what feeds the... Uh, the gut biome, your uh, fiber. So eat fiber every day. Actually, the lower your glucose in your body, you just eat. Uh, what I'm doing is eating whole uh, flax seed before I eat anything, and that's enough uh, to kind of lower your glucose spikes because these insulin spikes are killers. The American population is a Addicted to an, uh, the most addictive food, and they have no understanding that they are addicted to sugar. They think this is something to celebrate. I said it in a donut shop, which is higher class situation to go in a donut shop than a McDonald's. Absolutely makes no sense. There's nothing good in a donut shop. You can't eat some things in McDonald's that are relatively good for you. Uh, not many, but I mean, because of the cooking oil problem. I'm hoping that all these comp, uh, stores, I made a joke one time about a ke new keto restaurant opening up in uh, Lake Atalan, Guatemala, and nobody even bid on it because uh, they don't understand that a, there are maybe 2% of the population right now is growing that want to go keto, that want to eat healthy, that care about their thing, and they understand the problem with um what do you call them, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. The biggest problem is the mono and disaccharides, the single molecule and double molecule thing. These are carbohydrates. They are killing the United States people. Maybe that's why all these old people are so old. Everybody my age is older than me. Okay, I'm getting younger. Okay, but I, I do have a heart aneurysm, maybe. I didn't have a heart attack, even though the cardiac doctor said, Andy, you have a large, he didn't use it me, uh, he didn't say a spot, he said a large spot on your heart that's dead. Took that from a stress test, and he didn't really, he wasn't sure. I was the only person that's really been really good is this one nurse in my echocardiogram that says possibly had a heart attack. But you got to understand, the reason why doctors do this is they want to convince you to take their thing and scare you and make you not ask questions. And there's a real trauma for most people when they ever talk about, I can't even get my sisters or my family or my friends or anybody to even consider that the doctors may have been shitheads, okay? They act like everybody. Uh, my friend Mark said, you know, there was uh, Indiana University is the, supposedly has the most uh, medical... Uh, 
students of anywhere in the United States was where I went to university, Indiana University, Bloomington. I'm going to have a new sweatshirt too soon. It says Indiana University, Bloomington. Okay. Not that I'd recommend anybody go there right now. It's way too expensive. But I don't think universities worth the money anymore. If you could go there, there, my, you know, just monitor the class for $2 an hour or something. I don't know how much they audit. That's what they call it. Um, might be worth it for just the entertainment of spending time with the, some of the smartest people in the state or whatever. But the he, Mark said, you know what they call a person that is the uh, worst student in the class of 365 students for studying to be a doctor? What do they call this person? Doctor. This is the problem. Um, to actually for me to actually go through the process of trying to figure out who the best doctors are is very difficult. And uh, the doctors are so, sort of a self-prophesizing, self-propagating problem that um, they have so many people listening to them that they don't really realize they're not always cutting edge intelligent and they're not continuous learners, perpetual learners. I'm trying to put together a thing where I try to assess what a continuous learner is because the people that are, are you, like a lot of the guys at the corner, like Dave brings out a smartphone and he asks it questions. He's a continuous learner. There's a couple down there that are maybe, think, mostly Dave. Everybody else is putting in their time. Well, Matt, the state policeman, he's a, he's a continuous learner. All the rest are sort of, you know, tired and retired. Uh, they're not really uh, the best of the best at the game. I mean, you want to be the best example of human um, thing. In it. So I'm going to get down. I'm losing weight because I'm on a hardcore, no processed food, nothing with a label on the back of it. Even though they do put a bag, you, you buy already peeled garlic and it's in a bag in Kroger's and it's uh, got a label on the back of it. Everything's got a label on the back of it. Are they telling the truth? I, I don't believe any corporation. Uh, the best advice I ever heard is don't let a corporation be your chef. <laughs> okay, That's the worst possible thing you can do. Is, and that's what's happening right now in the United States. But why I'm biased to say that I don't want to hang around with old people in the United States. I don't want to hang around with people my age. It makes me feel old. But I have very few people I can do it. I did attend another men's group, and I just said, oh, these guys are way too tired for me. They're not, even though they're maybe wealthier, they're, they're not, uh, there's just a couple people at this group, I said, Matt and Dave, that are cutting edge knowledge-wise, and they, they make me a better person. What makes me a better person is these guys don't have any kind of respect for me other than to banter with me. My, I'm not sure my sisters even respect anything about me. I think they actually think I'm supposed to listen um, because they feel, what do you, I don't know what you would call it, Eco, economic uh, prejudice. The idea that I have money, you don't have money, therefore listen to me. This has got to be the worst possible way to deal with people on the planet. I. I remember I, I married, I was the guy that officiated a wedding in uh, Austin, Texas. And I think the reason why my friend asked me to do it was because he knew that I had no problem telling doctors and lawyers and people like this to go shut up and stand in line and listen. I have no, uh, no jealousy. I, I think being a doctor has got to be the worst possible profession you can have on the planet uh, just because of the overwhelming amount of uh, I believe that a doctor should spend at least 30 minutes with every single person that comes in yes we don't have enough doctors to do that but why because the whole system sort of goofy um, and nurse practitioners are becoming the second level which I don't know I mean uh, the whole thing's a, a money-making game and uh, the pharmaceuticals control everything and they are the lobbyists that control everything. There's nothing uh, logical and beneficial to the world by, by the corporations running the pharmaceutical industry, running the schools, running who becomes a doctor and running what medicines are. Thing. So make, they make money. Never take advice from somebody that can make money by giving you bad advice. Doctors on a regular basis do this. Uh, their job is they don't 
They don't service the cause of the problem. They only can talk about the symptoms. They want to stop the symptoms. So they want to give you pain relievers and all these things instead of saying, I want to solve the problem. Now, my knee replacement is just a construction job. That's a real easy thing. I, I weighed the guy on whether he was intent enough, focused enough, and he had the arms to cut off my knees. I'm actually considering not doing it for a couple years and seeing if I can't regenerate the uh, cartilage in my knees. I've came up with a couple ways to do this by hanging on an inversion table. Like I can only, it's best if I only stay on it for about five, say a count of 15, uh, three or four times a day. And it, it expands the joint and allows the synovial fluid to come in there. And then the, um, the fluid in, and all these different blood going into the joint that's brought apart. I think they call it distracted. Um, but th the point is, is um, I can also put uh, bottled weights like two, um, get, I guess they weigh eight pounds, like a gallon uh, thing of water that, you know, these milk come in. I could hang one on each foot for about, I don't know, and swing them a little bit every day. I should do this about five times a day for the next, uh, you know, two or three years. I immensely feel better <laughs> when the pain is really less when I do this. Um, and I do believe that you can grow cartilage. I would like the, uh, I have a deformity in my left leg and I would like the doctor to go in there and cut out the uh, arthritis or this layer of crap in there. But the United States is a bunch of old people, a bunch of entitled people. They don't make me proud. They don't make me happy. They live very nice lives. They live comfortably. They get 50 some percent get divorced because they have no idea how to uh, love each other. The Gottman Institute, Gottman, G-O-T-T-M-A-N, is the best video possible for learning how to have relationships. Uh, a lot of people get angry because I say these negative things. I, I told in an AA meeting the other day that, um, if you don't have any enemies, you're not an honest person. I 100% believe this. Oh, by the way, Tucker Carlson said the other day in a speech talking about this DNC, D Democrat National Convention. I hate when everybody uses abbreviations without telling you. The Democrat Convention is a, a signal of intelligence when people uh, take the take the abbreviations or the acronyms and tell you what they mean. Okay, that's a signal of intelligence. You want somebody intelligent, they're not going to talk about act. They're not going to talk with abbreviations or things just because they, they, they got a lazy mind. A lazy mind can't articulate. Okay, but the DNC, Tucker Carlson, this is a, a big boost. Robert F. Kennedy and Tucker Carlson said, hey, I went to an AA meeting with uh, Tucker Car uh, Robert Kennedy the other day. They went to an AA meeting. I also heard that Brad Pitt was going to some AA meetings. I'm trying to get the um, whole Alcoholics Anonymous thing to realize that this anonymity and one of the traditions that says at the level of press, we shouldn't admit that we go to AA is an archaic thing. Because right now what's happening, they got movies, everything where they depict what is going on in AA wrong. And they got a lot of YouTube videos where a bunch of really, really, really evil people are denigrating uh, Alcoholics Anonymous because they got sent there and they're angry at it. And they, they got a personal problem. I mean, it's one of the most, it's one of the only successful organizations for keeping sober on the planet. And it's free. The only requirement ship is a member to stop drinking. <laughs> It's kind of humorous. How can you? How can anybody? They got a doctor, Doctor De Pena in uh, Lake Atalan, Guatemala. People complain. I said, he's free. How can you? How can you complain about free advice? Well, they want to pay a hundred fifty dollars to have somebody because they trust the person because they had to pay a hundred fifty dollars. They obey the person. When something is free, they think it has no value. And that's the signal of a person that's not very intelligent. Okay, The best advice I ever got was from people that didn't even like me. Okay, okay. I'm Andy Lee Graham. I'm here and you're not. Why not? I'm not going to go. I'm not going to ever live in the United States if there's any possible way to avoid it. I'm going to get down to 165 pounds cut. 
get in the best shape of my life, get the heart working right, getting everything, getting all my, I'm going to stay, I'm going to go, I'm on a hardcore uh, diet regime where I'm eating the best of the best foods. I'm really every other day, I try to try to go whole days without eating. Um, every other day, oh man, I'm, I'm not, the worst thing you can do, whether you're exercising or doing going to AA or doing everything, is to make it into work. Make it into fun, okay? Um, I watch uh, probably about two hours of medical videos a day. If, if, if any of you get on my biohacking channel, I do have a database of about 500 different topics. That means 500 times I've watched two or three videos on a very specific subject and collected them. Okay. Life is good. I'm here and you're not. Why not? Uh, anybody that wants to actually discuss with me the trip to um, Israel and the, the goal of a philosopher and how to build tiny homes and all these different subjects that I'm polymath involved in, become a patron. Five dollars. And you can sit there and email me and I'll reply to your emails. I'm going to have an open thing. I'm, I'm a little bit, um, I've been a little bit stunned um, my, pri my prioritization of my life has been stunted because of the, uh, the telling me that I had uh, a heart attack. Um, I do admit that it must have given me stress that uh, paused my, my prioritization, okay? It didn't stop me, but it, it made me uh, sit there and get kind of confused. It's chaotic. How to keep the life calm enough that you have enough time to think what you're doing. How to have an introspective life when you're too busy. Obviously, the busier you are, the less you have an introspective life. I should come up with a quote for that. The busier you are, the less, less self-analyst, less, well, I don't know, Socrates, the, the uninspected, uh, the non-introspective life is not worth living. The people that are so busy that they have no introspection, it's not worth living. If you don't have at least, uh, I don't know, three or four hours a day for you where you can become a better person by talking to other philosophers, talking to new people, talking to, uh, watching media, watching, studying, journalizing and stuff, I'm not sure what you're doing. You definitely are not in the top of the top of knowledge. Uh, I always amazed at Jordan Peterson and uh, this, this uh, what is his name, Robert Lustig. Robert Lustig is a genius. He's like from U UCLA or something like that. And he's uh, L-U-S-T-I-G on medical stuff. Him and Dr. Gundry do long-form videos. Long-form videos on health are 10 times better than um, just short-form. Short-forms are obviously there to make money for the people that – don't really want to study, but long-term, uh, long, long videos are much better. That's why I'm making long videos because uh, you can watch them at work. They, they're big enough that you can go on a 30-minute drive and listen to me talk and things like that. I know I drive you crazy, and that's okay. I don't drive myself crazy. I got this in the bot on every chapter I'm writing on this book, Philosophy of. I'm putting at the end. Uh, I know that I annoy people, but I don't annoy myself. And I, anybody that I care about, anybody that I care enough to not offend is my master. You're a slave to everybody that you suck up to. Everybody in the United States is always sucking up with their white lies and their crappy things. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing how everybody wants to fit in. They really... What they do is they lose their honesty to try to fit in, and therefore they become a less valuable person to the world. I'm Andy Lee Graham.